until a few months ago, we'd be standing in midair right now because this second floor wasn't here. This is just a big empty shell of a warehouse. Uh, this is now a big hangout lounge right here. Um, we have our our uh, archive and wall of shame, as we as we used to call it, over here and there. These are uh, some artist pedals that have come back over the years from like Kings of Leon and The Strokes and Kirk Hammett and other folks. Uh, over here, this is actually kind of cool. I want to take a moment to explore this. This is the very early days of visual sound shown in here. Before it ever became a company, I was just a guitar player and uh, let's see, I uh, bought my first Ernie Ball volume pedal at the Carpenter Music Store in California back in 1988. And that, my frustrations with that is what led to these little experiments right here, woodblock stuff that was basically my attempt to make a volume pedal with a fader and a zero to 10 reference scale. That never actually went anywhere, but it made a few prototypes and my friends like to call it the banana peel because, well, if you stepped on it, you get the idea and probably slip. Um, and then I finally started experimenting with other designs like how can you make a pivot bracket using a, a cabinet door handle from Home Depot and cable clamps. I know that's quality craftsmanship right there, but hey, it worked. And that led to what actually was the first product that Visual Sound put out, the, vi the very first visual volume, complete with Home Depot cabinet door handles and cable clamps. Anyhow, I made a bunch of these, and that's what got things started. Started getting me into trouble. And then eventually changed to the VB2, the second version of it, which I also had a hand in making all of these. A uh, little different, improved design. Still pretty garagey. Uh, 1996. That that was in, by the way, that was the end of end of 94 and, and throughout 95. In 96, I started experimenting with other things like a variable, a variable blues overdrive, visual blues. It's like taking the drive knob of a bluesy overdrive and sticking it under your foot. Same idea with a visual metal. It's a hard distortion, but with variable distortion. We did a wah volume. Now bear in mind. We only made like a hundred of each of these, so if you have one, hang on to it. There aren't very many out there. I made a, a visual wah, not a wah volume, but just a wah wah pedal for, for Bono. Somehow he had heard the visual volume way over in Ireland and, th and, and thought, hey, that'd be cool if he had it in a, in a wah pedal. So you two contacted me in 96. I built two visual wah pedals, put a little sticker on the back that said Bono wah, and uh, shipped them off to Ireland, and he liked them, I guess. It's kind of cool. It's an honor to do it. Um, this complete mess of a circuit board was the, the experimental circuit board I used to develop Jekyll and Hyde. There's hardly anything left of it anymore because it just got experimented to death, but it's kind of cool. And uh, this is one of the first hundred Jekyll and Hyde's real circuit boards that my wife and I put together back on that old kitchen table that you saw downstairs. A lot of... Uh, blood, sweat, and tears in, in these things. And this is actually one of the completed 100 Jekyll and Hyde pedals that uh, Julie and I put together. Kind of cool. Uh, 